Welcome, friends and loved ones. Looking around this table tonight, I am reminded of so much that I am grateful for. To you, Sister Johnny, I am thankful for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon all of us throughout the year. To you, uber sexy Johnny who is always naked, I am thankful for all the views and attention that your nakedness has garnered this television program. I look around this table and I am reminded that this is a time of giving, of gratitude, where we welcome our neighbors, those who are downtrodden and without hope, we bring them into our bosom and let them know that we are here to help. The fuck are you doing in my house, Troy? Troy, what the fuck are you doing in my house? I told you never to come back in my house, Troy. You get your fucking ass out of my house. Get the fuck out of my house, you fucking freeloader. Troy, you son of a bitch. Get the fuck. Get the fucking. Get the fuck. Thanksgiving. It is the latest from horror maestro Eli Roth and is inspired by his mock trailer shown in the criminally underrated double feature Grindhouse. In the film, a small town that goes really hard for a specific holiday seeks to recover after a tragedy that occurred on said specific holiday by doing all the same bullshit that led to the original tragedy to begin with. But this year, on this very specific holiday, a mass killer seeks to punish those who are partaking in the holiday traditions. Gobble, gobble, gobble. You've seen it all before. But with this flick in particular, I feel like that's kind of the point. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so if you haven't had a chance to see the movie yet, what the fuck are you doing with your life feel free to jump on in the water's nice give me the good stuff the number one question raised when it comes to slashers is how are the kills and let me assure you that these kills are a cut <laughs> above the rest. And a good holiday themed slasher has to have good holiday themed kills and this one has some coming out the ass. Cob holders to the ears, meat cleavers to the face, decapitated poultry mascots, bitchy broads being basted, baked, and brought to a bonkers turkey dinner. Kills in this flick alone are worth the price of admission. Just like you can't have a proper turkey day without an entire bottle of Jack and an endless supply of painkillers, you can't have good kills without good gore and thank Thanksgiving spares no expense. I won't get into all the gory <laughs> Did <it again. laughs> details, but suffice it to say, you see just as much of people's insides as you do their outsides. In order to achieve a true iconic slasher, you need not only great kills and great gore, but also a great villain. The John Carver killer was basically a hit as soon as the trailers dropped. Going against the grain of the typical slashers that Thanksgiving is paying homage to, the characters and more importantly, the acting is all really good. Which for a slasher picture is a big fucking deal. Even the asshole jock stereotype manages to have a naive charm despite his douchebaggery. We can't talk about all this good stuff without acknowledging the man behind the camera. Writer, producer, and director Eli Roth who is absolutely on fire with this flick. I've personally always really liked his films, but rarely have I ever loved them. I've been a bigger fan of the man himself and his love for the genre. It is that love for horror and good old tiny 80s slashers that is so apparent in Thanksgiving and 100% sold me on this flip. Well, I suppose it's about time to talk about the shit. This movie does get a bit bogged down with its runtime. Anything past the 90 minute mark is pushing it for a slice em and dice em picture and this one clocks in at 105. I just kind of found myself thinking that there were characters and interactions and side quests that did not feel essential to the plot. Long story short, see what I did there? This flick is about 15 minutes too long. It's probably unreasonable for me to have wanted an aesthetic that more closely resembled the foul trailer and grindhouse, right? Foul? Fox? Foul? Fox? There's definitely a French way to say it, and maybe an English way to say it. Foul or Fox? I'm gonna say Foul. Because I'm cultured, motherfuckers! I know a modern day audience would never go for it, but the grimy texture, shitty film quality, and overall dirty feel made that trailer seem like it lived in the same world as flicks like Blood Rage and Silent Night, Deadly Night. And I would have loved for this movie to have felt more like that. Fingers crossed that we get an unrated cut that shows that cheerleader doing the splits on the trampoline when she gets knocked 
knife just like in the grindhouse trailer because that broad got off way too easy in the feature film. Go ahead and give me that rewatch. There's no reason to beat around the bush. This flick is insanely rewatchable. Not only is it filled to the brim with awesome kills, savage gore, and laugh out loud comedy, but the internet has basically come to the agreement that it is an instant classic and an essential holiday viewing every Thanksgiving moving forward. Horror fan or not, you should definitely go see this flick. It's fun, funny, and just a little bit gory. Now just give me six shitty sequels with two theatrical releases and the rest going straight to VOD. Where the second film copies and pastes from the first film, the third film is the fan favorite, the fourth film goes back to basics while the sixth film goes out to outer space, but the deep cut horror heads know that the fifth film is actually the best of the bunch. Well, it's just about time to throw on some sweatpants, kick back with a cocktail, and pass the fuck out on the couch. I'm Johnny Horror, and I'm thankful you tuned into the Johnny Horror reviews and I'm thankful to everyone who supports the show but most of all I'm thankful to everyone who doesn't unfriend me despite me constantly promoting my new and never-ending content you're the real MVPs happy Thanksgiving motherfuckers